On this video, you're going to be watching part one of the stressor transformation. In part two, we'll focus on putting a few more highlights on the details and especially applying the transfer to the sides of this piece. But let's watch part one as we transform this dresser with some great, easy to do painting techniques. Darren with both high treasures. I'm hoping you're having a great week. Excited for the weekend. We are here, ready to go. Helps me a lot when you come in and say hi. If you want to let me know where you're watching from, that's always cool. And uh, I always enjoy seeing uh, everybody pop in and hang out with me tonight. Let me give you a little bit of uh, background on this piece briefly and we'll get going. I had planned on doing a different plan and I literally changed my mind tonight because I just wasn't feeling the, uh, I'm going to be putting a transfer on this tomorrow and I just wasn't really feeling the direction uh, for this piece so we changed it which in other words is not going to be yellow when it's done and uh, I am planning on changing that up a little bit and we're going to go with French linen and driftwood just to give you a little bit of an idea how those colors are going to look more toned down and gray and the reason being I was going to put the sun, sunflower transfer set on here but I just it wasn't fitting right and uh, so I think I'm gonna and I had put this would you been molding on it last night and by the way, in case you're wondering, let me make sure I get the number right. This is uh, 2094A, I think it is. And you can see my Would You Bend link on my website, bowtietreasures.com, and click on Would You Bend in the shop, and you can look at this one. But I really thought this was a nice addition to it. And uh, to be honest with you, I think it goes really, really great with the lace transfer. So right now, as it stands, and I may change my mind again on that, I'm going to put the lace transfers on the side, almost as a side panel. And I think it's just going to be a really nice, classy kind of like frame to the piece. Uh, the other option I'm going to do is maybe run it across the top. But right now, it's going to be on the side. And I'm sticking to it. I'm sticking to it because I got to make, make up my mind. And uh, so what we need to do is we need to get this thing from from being yellow to being more of a gray, warm gray tone. Um, both the driftwood and French linen have warm tones and you can see those uh, nicely. I have not determined about blending, so let's kind of figure that out tonight. And also where I'm going to blend. I think my current plan is to do more of a glow and kind of get darker as I go out instead of doing maybe a light to a dark which I, I kind of do that a lot but I think I'm going to do more of a glow um, it's a little bit more challenging that way but I do like that direction and uh, before I move ahead let me grab a sanding sponge uh, I do like to do a quick sand between coats just because it does get all of that. It softens the, but I'm looking for anything that's little nubbies that are sticking up that just aren't, aren't right. And I usually only focus on the big, larger surfaces. And by the way, I, the, hardware, the hardware on this <clears throat> is wood, just generic wood knobs. I very will likely reuse them or I'm going to buy more decorative knobs and I'm probably going to wait to the end to d decide that. I also, let me just show you real quick, take you for a ride. I have sanded the top and I'm planning on staining that and my go-to stain of late has been Voodoo Gel Stain just because I love how well it brings out the color of the wood and it's quick and easy, meaning uh, I don't have to wait a few days for it to dry. I just really like the Voodoo Gel Stain. That kind of gives us a reset of where we are. I have my dresser on my handy dandy um, 
Lazy Susan with some boards just so I can stand up and that'll give you some flexibility. I do, I do know that if I'm gonna go this route <clears throat> of replacing the hardware, I've got a, I may have to get rid of these extra circles and by circles, I'll bring you in and show you. I'm talking about these circles here. A lot of hardware oftentimes have a big enough space, but not always. So that's the kind of thing you have to be careful where this one doesn't have it and this one doesn't have too much. So whenever you're replacing hardware, those are the kind of things you may have to keep an eye on. So that may affect what I decide to do. All right, uh, I think we're ready to paint. Remember our vision at this point is to see if we can create a little bit of a vignette around each drawer. And um, I have, like I said, since I just decided about this plan earlier, uh, we've got to do some work. I'm, I am going to have to double time this a little bit because it, I need to make sure that this dresser is nice and dry before I can put a transfer on it tomorrow. So I really don't know if I can do it. I'm going to put two coats between now and, and then maybe this last coat tomorrow morning, but I really like to get it all done tonight. So we'll see uh, if that's going to work. And um, I really like the yellow to be honest with you, but it's just not going to work with the lace in my opinion. The lace transfer is kind of gray, but I, I actually don't mind if some of the yellow peeks through just to create some depth. So I'm not going to sweat if I don't get this thing 100% coated. So I'm, I am going to leave some of the yellow through in places. I think that'll be kind of cool. So I, I, I'll, I'll keep the yellow, which is Rebel Yellow, on the list of colors because every once in a while there'll probably be some in there. One thing I did on this piece was I did brush strokes in many directions. I, I want a little bit of that texture because the dresser has flaws. And so there's a piece of veneer missing, there's some chips. And I think it's perfectly fine as a furniture artist to let the piece of furniture play into the style and the result. I don't, you know, you don't always have to fit, patch and fill everything. If someone's buying an antique dresser, I think they're kind of expecting it to not be in mint condition. So I'm not going to um, fight that. Can you see even right now how the gray is letting there's some yellow showing through? That's what I was trying to let you see. It's, per, uh, it's perfectly fine to let that happen. This is the part that's going to give it its character. Now, if you think that that's too much, in other words, if it's too much roughness, then, then paint it all the way. And I'm at the stage where I can do that. You know, maybe that's too much. We'll just cover a little bit more up. I don't want too much showing, but remember we do have two colors happening. If I'm gonna blend, I need to do that soon, but right now, I'm not sure. But right now I am painting with driftwood, which is a warm gray. It's playing really nice with this rebel yellow. Quite ecstatic about it. Ecstatic's probably the wrong word. I'm not sure what my facial expression would be with the, if I actually was ecstatic. So we'll do a quick, fast coat of driftwood and then we will come back and hopefully everything if we have to I'll bring out the the jet dryer just kidding I don't have a jet dryer we will push the drying a little bit I do really really think it'd be great for me to get this all painted tonight
All right. That's a pretty good first coat and I'm actually quite happy with how in many places the rebel yellow is coming through. I would have never done that. I, I had no intentions on having those two things happen, but in the artistic world, accidents often reveal fun surprises. I do want to, one of the main reasons why I put the would you been transfer on is because I want to be able to have a focal point and accent that. And there, there's many, many ways of doing that. Uh, glazes, waxes, I don't do wax per se. If we review again, my goal was to um, kind of vignette the, the piece. I'm moving my camera back a little bit. There's a number of ways to do that. One, we could blend one color to another color. And so blending would be when both colors are wet. But shading would be when only one color is wet and you're applying the color thinly. And I think that's what I'd like to try is to see if shading gives us the look, oh, excuse me, that I, that I need. So we're gonna have to make sure that we have misting bottles handy. Those are really critical. I'm gonna miss this mini brush and dip into the French linen. I've been using French linen. It seems like it's kind of in like in the top 10 of all the colors that I've been using of late. And that's good. I do like how warm and cozy it is. So in this case, what we're gonna do, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna pull out. I need another brush. So I'm gonna have the, this is the La Petite brush, and this is the Best thing brush. Both of them are going to come in handy, but I'm going to <clears throat> try and use the uh, La Petite brush because it's going to give us the ability to have a nice. All right. So what I want to do here is I'm, I want to boldly or largely, I want to put in a, a large amount of paint. The disadvantage right now is that my undercoat paint is still a little wet and I'm just going to run with it. That means there's going to be some blending happening, although I don't really, that wasn't the plan, but I think it'll be okay. So you normally I would let, if I'm going to shade instead of blend, I, I would do that. I would let the other color, let's switch to the We're just gonna run with it. <clears throat> yeah, my paint's not liking this. Just too soon. So we're gonna not do that. But as I told you before, I really wanna get this done tonight, so we're just gonna switch. So I'm gonna lightly apply French linen with the shading and not overwork it. In other words, I'm not gonna use another brush to blend it in. I'm just gonna lightly apply it and keep it thin layered. I think we'll be good. Don't, for me right now, I'm not going to, I don't wanna wipe off all, I want still want some of the French linen. No. Rebel yellow, get my colors right. And Driftwood was the second color, and I don't want to wipe all that out. So you could you could leave this uh, what we would call dry brush, but I'm using this mister bottle fairly liberally so that the paint is going on thin, so I can kind of blend it in. There's a thick area of paint, but all this texture to me is a win. It's going to look like. It's been painted a few times in time, and we're gonna go with those layers. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about because we are a little bit further away. Do you see some of the texture happening with the spots? And down below, there are some brush strokes. All those are playing into our favor, and we'll add to the character 
and the drama of the piece. We're gonna work on the front now. So my technique currently is mist because I wanna keep it wet, keep my brush wet. And we're just going to lightly, not putting much paint or much pressure. It's kind of going on, I don't want dry brush, so I'm gonna keep it wetter than a dry brush technique. And I'm using my brush to lightly feather that French linen. Remember, we want somewhat of a vignette, so I don't want to, I don't want to come into the middle. I want to keep this area light. And now maybe what I'll do is I'm going to let this area dry because I think the previous colors are still a little bit volatile in that area. So we're kind of, I don't know, we're doing a little bit of every, a little mixed, a couple technique mixes here, but I'm focusing on the outer edges, almost kind of like I'm adding a little bit of dirt on the outside and I'm leaving the lighter drift wood towards the middle. So it's going to kind of bring the eye in. This may not be the end color that I use, but I really do like where we're at right now and how it's dramatically kind of bringing it in. So you're gonna see, I see a little bit of the rebel yellow, the gray, and now the French linen coming in. Just a little nesting. And I'll pro I probably could see me bringing in another warm, darker color just to add some, even some more drama, dram, drama to the bottom of the piece. But I'll probably add, that, that won't affect me putting a transfer on, so I'll let, I'll let that work out itself out tomorrow. So you can see the right side has the French linen and this side on the left is not. Let's keep working on this left side and I'm taking about one drawer at a time. Because your misting is it's gonna start setting up and drying on you, so it doesn't do much good to wet the whole dresser down. And I sometimes I'll go back and forth between, am I getting the brush and the piece wet, or just the piece, or the furniture, if you will. And you can always come back, in fact, I think this is even the rag we used last week. It's been clean. And you can wipe some of the paint off if you went too far. But just kind of keep, keep an eye on it. It's not scientific or doesn't have to be exact. Just kind of keep an eye on where you are. The disadvantage is, is, keep, is knowing that that side's still kind of wet and drying. So it could be a little bit misleading but don't get worked up That's if it's not perfect. It's not the end of the world. It's, yeah, it's not the end of the world. I want to have this middle rung to be a little darker, so I'm putting a little color in there because I do want this to be very much vignetted towards the middle. There's so many directions you can go with this technique, um, but tonight I've kind of modified it simply because I'm trying to get it all done in one sitting, or sometimes I will let paint dry before I do my shading. And, but knowing that tomorrow I don't really have much of an opportunity to do that. But this is nice, I like this technique. I have no regrets, it still looks great. It's very appropriate for this age of piece. I even left the driftwood in the middle here. If after it dries, you, it's not dramatic enough for you, go either a little darker with the shading. Uh, I could even come back and do some highlighting if it's too, too dark. Like I'm seeing a little, maybe too much French linen right here. Let me see if my rag will even, if I can just kind of fade out some of that. It's, that's actually pulling out a little bit of the French linen. That's cool. A little bit kind of an accent panel. 
kind of having a, what do we call that, a accent wall and not the whole. Sometimes we stick them on the whole, only on the front. I kind of like the, I think it's going to be cool just to, just to have it on the ends. I say that now, we'll see. I'm going to switch bottles here. I don't want to get too heavy with the paint. If the paint's dragging, that's where the misting bottle definitely comes into play. Totally no regrets at this point because I think this adding some lovely depth. Some other w colors that I think would look nice underneath, maybe um, dusty blue, paint blues, just something that's got some cool tones to it. When you're doing color theory, it's nice to have a complement color when you're doing something warm at a cool. And um, so that yellow is adding a, a nice bit of variety, but it's not, it's still in a warm color. So <clears throat> a blue would be pretty cool. Now the driftwood has a little bit of t blue tones to it, which might be causing some odd colors on the screen. So I left the middle mostly driftwood with a little bit of, and then I focused on the edges with French linen. So coming back to the front, it's still drying. Let's see if we can, it's still got some wet paint in there, but we're going to go with it. I could easily wait till tomorrow, but I'm going to put the shading on our Would You Bend transfer. If you'd like to see Dick Would You Bend's full line, you can go to my website, bowtietreasures.com, and go to the Would You Bend link, either in the shop menu or on the home page, and you'll find uh, Would You Bend's like this. This one is perfect for this piece. So I'm using, this is the round small. I don't use it a lot, but I like the blunt edge for things like when I really need to push some paint in there. And I'm using almost like a stenciling brush to feather the French linen around. And I'm gonna give it a little bit more misting. And I'm gonna try the La Petite brush. It's a natural fiber brush and I'm going to use it to do a, a little bit of refined shading in there. Let's try the gravel road and I'm going to show you how I'd like to use it. So we're going to bring you guys in just to give me a second, but this is not an, un, this is not an unusual technique for me, but I think you'll get the idea of how lovely it can work. So we're going to continue with the shading idea. I'm going to use the same round small brush and all I'm going to do is I'm going to wet down this leg. I like the idea when it kind of feels like, you know, they never quite got this piece totally clean. And so I did this a little bit on my last piece. The best way this works is when you're, you're under coating, the paint underneath is not wet. And I'm not sure that I'm really mixing it anyway, but it's giving us just a little bit of depth. I'm gonna keep it wet. If it blends, so be it. If it doesn't blend, so be it as well. But I'm trying to just be somewhat irregular, even stat, not statting's wrong word stenciling on it just to give it some texture. I'm totally cool if it puts some depth in there. And then just play with it. Um, if you find other places that you think it would be good just to kind of add some depth and texture to it. So just adding a little bit of shading in there. Okay, you can see that from a distance. And if you ever get too much, just here, rub it off. Check 
just trying some things out. I liked it back the way it was. So I'm gonna put some back in there. Just a touch. Unload it on something else if you want. A little bit of water. Sometimes you can reactivate earlier coats that we did. Whatever you do here, just make sure you match the other side. Okay, because you don't want them to not match. And I'm gonna bring, I kind of overdid it there. I've got a little bit of French linen left in my brush. I'm gonna just back off a little bit on that. Now I'm kind of blending. And that's okay. So back over here, missed it just a touch. I'm using gravel road right now. Don't want it too dirty, but I don't want it, I definitely don't want it too perfect. So whatever gives you that desired look. And in this case, what I did on the other side was a little bit of blending. So we'll keep rolling with that. But I just gotta make sure I get it dark enough to match the other side. You probably have a good view where you're at because you're stepped back. I'm a little into it. And we're gonna miss the whole foot. Leg, actually, I think would be a correct term. And this is what we did over there. And I don't know how far or how much in, up into the piece I'm gonna take. gravel road, but it's been a good color so far. I just don't want to be too dry brush here. That's why I'm using the misting bottle quite a bit. And if you have to mist it some more, feather it, soften it. This is how we get this done. This is how we get that look. Call it whatever you want, cottage, French. How we added that darker tone. Then you, can, if you compare the two, it's darker down here. But it's very subtle. It just gives us a little bit of extra shading. So if I come over here and I grab a smaller brush, and I'm gonna mist it. And I'm just gonna push this in there. This is gravel road. I don't have a lot on my brush, but I'm pushing the tone or the gravel road in the crevices of the darker, the deeper areas, because I want that to pop more. But I don't necessarily want, right now, at least in my mind, I don't want the gravel road all over. I just want it in the darker, deeper areas, because I want this to be more dramatic Probably a little bit more than I expected there, but okay. Give it a little bit of mist. When you work wet, it's going to be easier to move around. Just get it in there. So I'm 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 working in the shadows, I'm not really working so much in the upper highlight area. Okay, and then there's the how the La Petite brush allows me to fade that in. I can get a smaller brush and, and do more if I want, but right now I'm just kind of working on the low lights. I think that's working good. So that some other areas that you can do is you could take some of the previous color and you could just lightly, you know, I'm not even, I didn't even put any color on my brush. I'm just using some of the leftover color that's still in the brush, and just adding a dusting of gravel road there. I'm gonna get a little bit of paint, just touched, just really touched it in the paint can, and just kind of adding some depth there. Probably not even picking it up on camera. I'm gonna add just a little bit more because I'm not getting as much as I was hoping to. There we go. 
I don't want a lot. That's probably still more than I want. Just adding some depth to the, to the corners. So it's kind of like where it gets, not getting all the way clean. This is the kind of thing you're just not gonna see very, very easily on first looks or on camera, if you will. I'll pull you in. Been doing that a lot, right? Do you see right there? That's where I just kind of lightly dusted it. Let's see if I can get this. Light, light pressure. You can use a myriad of brushes. The French tip would be really nice for this. Just don't use a lot. Okay, we're continuing that vignette. Just don't put much on there or you're gonna be, there's hardly any on here, but if you did put a lot on here, you probably would regret it. You would probably, you, I would say you might see people do this a lot with like wax. I just don't use wax. Not my thing, but I like how that little bit of, you should be able to pick it up on the camera, the little touches on the corners. And I'm trying to be careful not to go too far with this, but you're adding depth and character to your piece. And these are just little simple techniques you can do that. So just a little bit. Okay. There are other places that I think work well to add that to. Here's another place that sometimes I will, that I'll add some darkening to because I don't want a lot of light in here. So this is a great place to kind of put some negative tone. So I'll dirty up, dirty is the wrong word, but I will shade this area because like if I'm taking pictures or I, I don't want this part to stand out. I don't want this darker shadow area to be as dark or as light as the rest. So I'm even doing the backside here. The philosophy or the thought here is that whoever was the owner of this piece just never quite cleaned all the way back in there. So you're just adding some authenticity to the piece, if you will. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of that corner dusting right here. My brush got a little too wet. So I'm going to use the French, the La Petite to blend that. Okay. And then I'm going to wipe off any that got on the top. I don't, I don't want that sh sh darker tone on the high side. Put a little bit right there. Mainly corners right now. You'll probably find that these corners will dry darker by tomorrow. So you may either be excited or regretful. <laughs> I don't know. And I'm just pushing old, not much paint up there. And I'll even use the La Petite to just see if it needs any depth. Remember, this is where my transfer is going to go, so I don't need much going on here. Swing this around. And I think we'll be wrapping this up here in, a few minutes, in just a few minutes. Hopefully this gives you some ideas, some techniques to try. I always love it if you use my link to order, and you order your Dixie Bell supplies. And I put that in the comment, in the description of the post, or you can always go to my website anytime. Oops, see I put way too much paint there. So we're gonna wipe that off. That's quite all right. You don't wanna wipe too hard because, because the under the paint underneath is a little wet. You have to just never panic. 
Always work with whatever happens, right? You can make this work. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you know? It might be that this corner did get some more. Got some extra dirt. That's okay. See, I don't know if you can notice, but even right here, I didn't patch that veneer that's missing. I'm playing, I, I think that's perfectly fine to let that be as it is. All right, I'm, all, I'm starting to overwork it too much. And that's gonna be pretty annoying here pretty soon if I don't stop fidgeting with it. I don't want it perfect, I just don't want to look, I don't want it to look um, like, I, like I literally wiped it off wrong. I want to stop when it starts feeling a little bit more natural. Just pushing some of the gravel road up there. Fairly dry, not much moisture on my brush at this point. So remember, this piece started out with one coat of Rebel Yellow. And we did all this tonight in just how long? 43 minutes. But I love this style. I think it's gonna do really well. It, it has the color palette that people will like. It's very neutral, cozy, has a little bit of a touch of decorative. The lace transfer is, um, it's, it's got some nice qualities about it. And I love how well it complements the wood you've been mold. So that should all come back together. And uh, if this helps you, uh, don't hesitate to pass it on to another furniture artist that might can use it. As always, do something creative this weekend. If you have any questions and need anything, let me know. And be sure to shop with my link next time you have an opportunity. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.